At this time, I'd like to introduce to you our Attorney General for the State of Ohio, Michael DeWine. Attorney General DeWine started his career in public service in, Green, in the Greene County Public Prosecutor's Office, where he was elected prosecutor in 1976. He has also served as an Ohio Senator, as a member of the U.S. House of Representatives, as Ohio Lieutenant Governor, and as a U.S. Senator. In each of the offices he has held, he has focused particular attention on efforts to protect children, ranging from making sure prescriptions that kids take are safe and effective to helping foster children get into permanent, stable, and loving homes. As our 50th Attorney General, Michael DeWine continues his commitment to families and children across the great state of Ohio. Ohio Reach attendees, I am honored to present to you Attorney, Michael, Attorney General Michael DeWine. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Well, good to be with all of you. Good morning. Let me uh, first thank the director. Uh, he and I both are from Greene County, and yes, we both are named Michael. Um, he's a little younger than I am, though. <laughs> Better looking. But um, I, I just want to congratulate him. I don't know anybody in state government has a bigger job than he has. And if you listen to the, that the whole department go down, and that was only part of what they do, uh, it's a phenomenal, phenomenal uh, job that he has. And I just, you know, so appreciate uh, his focus on foster children, uh, his focus on what happens after they leave and become foster alumni. Um, he gets it. And he's a man of great compassion, great integrity, uh, and a lot of energy. And so we're very, very fortunate to have him in, in that position. I want to also thank all of you for caring. Thank you for what you do uh, every single day. Um, for the general public, the only time they think about, this is generalization, but the only time the average Ohioan thinks about foster care is when there's a story in the paper there's a problem. Uh, and some kid has been killed or something has happened uh, connected with the system or child welfare system. Uh, and then we go back and everyone, no one pays any attention. So thank you for being committed. Thank you for, for understanding. Um, as you heard, I started my career in Greene County as an assistant county prosecuting attorney. I came home uh, from law school, Ohio Northern, and I was 25 and married and had a few children, and I went into that prosecuting attorney's office, uh, and I didn't know a whole lot. I uh, walked in the door, and literally the first day, the um, prosecuting attorney's office was in the courthouse uh, in those days, and uh, the uh, secretary at the time threw me, literally threw me a file, and said, uh, it's like 8.15 in the morning. She says, 8.30, you go down in Judge McAllister's court and juvenile court. I said, what am I supposed to do? She said, well, you're representing Children's Services. And I really hardly knew what Children's Services was. But I went down there, and I represented Children's Services. And it, that period of my career really was a formative period. I think the time I spent as an assistant prosecutor and then the time I spent as the elected prosecutor in Greene County probably was, well, clearly it was more influential, more informative, more important than any other part of my career. Because when you're a county prosecuting attorney, you see about every problem in your county. And the county prosecutor represents children's services. And I was first introduced to the foster care system. I was first introduced to uh, what Children's Services does and all the different uh, challenges that, that, that they face. And I've never forgotten it. Uh, I've never forgotten some of the cases that we had, some of the children uh, that we did dealt with. And again, as I said, it's every problem in your county kind of comes across your desk. And some of the things that I saw that were being done to kids, I just couldn't believe. Uh, and frankly, still still really can't, can't believe. Um, Fast forward to when I went to the United States Senate a number of years later. Um, carried with me that experience about uh, 
dealing with, with children in foster care. Um, started seeing some what I consider to be horror stories around the state, and we en ended up uh, being a major player in the Adoption Safe Families Act of 1997. Um, not perfect bill, no bill that ever comes out is, but it was progress, and I think we were moving in the, in the right direction. Uh, focusing on kids, focusing on adoption. One of the provisions that I wrote uh, for the bill uh, was kind of common sense, but it was very controversial when I introduced it, and that had to do with family reunification, which had been the law for years before I even came to Congress. Uh, but I had, wanted to add a provision that said, uh, notwithstanding any of the above, notwithstanding the requirement to try to use reasonable efforts to reunite a child with his natural parents, a parent, that the safety of the child was always the most important thing. And so we put that into the law. Shouldn't have needed to be in there, but we, we put it in the law. And that's the law in the country and law that every judge or at every children's service uh, has to look at. Um, I became Attorney General, again, fast forward a number of years, uh, and I decided that I was going to stay interested in this issue. Now, you know, I started talking about this, and one day I came home and my wife looked at me, Fran looked at me, and we've now been married almost 46 years, so she kind of knows what I'm interested in, knows what I, what I do, and kind of knows how crazy I am about some, some issues and fo my focus. She says, well, okay, that's all, all good, but what jurisdiction does the Attorney General have with foster care and adoption and children's services and social services? And I looked at her and said, none, <laughs> absolutely none, but I care about it and I'm gonna do it. And so what we did, we put together a series of uh, meetings around the state uh, to focus on foster care. And again, with no jurisdiction, but it's amazing if you're the Attorney General uh, and you pick up the phone or somebody on your behalf, like Melinda, who is, right, let me introduce Melinda. Stand up, Melinda. Haggerty. She's newly married, and I can't get used to the new name, but anyway, she does a great, great job, an attorney for our office who was in foster care and who heads up our children's initiatives. Um, but we started putting these meetings together around the state, and she would call people and they would actually show up. Uh, and we did eight of them. And we spent over a year doing it. Uh, and what we normally would do is we'd have a panel and we'd bring in judges and we'd bring in children's services folks and then, but we'd open it up to the public. And while the panel was always good and we'd have a juvenile judge and they always were, were very, very good and very, very informative. I must tell you that the most important, most informative part of the meeting was not the people we invited. It was the people who just showed up. And it, these were public meetings. We always try to do things in the Attorney General's office and public, public, and let people come in. Um, and it was the people who showed up. And it was the foster care alumni. It was the foster parents. And they had the most telling uh, comments. and that were just riveting. Um, we did eight of those around the state. And after that, I put together a group, um, what we call the Foster Care Advisory Group. And again, these were judges and these were people who deal with this area every day. A few of you I see out there are actually on, on that group. And I said, 90 days. Come back in 90 days with recommendations. Take what we learned in these eight meetings but you're not constricted by that at all. You all do whatever you want and come back with tangible recommendations for the legislature, for the Supreme Court, for the governor, for anybody. Just do whatever you want to do. And I kind of left them alone. Uh, well, I did leave them alone. And I, they went and they, they came back in 90 days. And I set 90 days because if you don't set a time period, it just goes on forever and we never get anything. Uh, but I said, come back with things that we can get done. And that's what they did. And they came back with, with recommendations. And those recommendations are now, have been put in bill form. Uh, Peggy Lehner is one of the people who's, who's carrying the bill. 
uh, in the legislature. We have other legislators uh, involved. Um, and we're going to see what happens. Um, the recommendations they made, I think, are, are very, very practical. Um, and I won't go through them all because I think some of you have already looked at them. But they came really from people who are in the system, foster kids, um, foster parents. I mean, we heard from foster parents who said, no one ever asked us what's best for this child. Um, we know. We're dealing with the child every day. The child's lived with us for years. Why didn't somebody ask us in the system? We had foster children who said the same thing, that, hey, you know, this is our life. Why didn't anybody ask us? We heard from foster kids who said, why can't we live a normal life, as much normal as we can live being in foster care? Why is it that I can't go out um, to my best friend's house for a sleepover when I'm 15? Why can't I do that? Why can't I drive a car? Why can't I do this? Why can't I do that? Things that you all know, but I didn't really know. Um, so we had some just amazing comments that, that were made. Um, comments about guardian ad litem. Uh, guardian ad litems do a great job, but in some cases, uh, we got some lawyers who aren't doing a very good job. And that just came right out, and people just said that. Uh, it, w it was interesting when we held our first one and then our second one. By the time I got to the second one, I could almost recite what everyone was going to say. Uh, there's a common theme. It's when you hear something time and time and time again, um, you sort of know it starts to sink in. And uh, we, we kept picking up a few new things, but it was pretty much the same story time after time after time. Uh, the need for mentoring of a child. And, foster care, the need for what you all are focused on, what happens as the child, quote, ages out, which is kind of a stupid term, I use it, but child is done with being in foster care. What, what happens then? Uh, and one of the things that, that we decided to, to do uh, with these recommendations, it's easy to make recommendations, but money matters too. And so we came up some, with some money, money to uh, expanding the CASA program in the state. Money to this great organization so you can expand a million dollars, so you can expand some of the things that, that you're doing. That, <clears throat> because you can't do, do it without money. Uh, this money, by the way, came from a mortgage settlement it's not, it is not tax dollars. Uh, we had a settlement with the mortgage servicers. This was out of the robo, if you remember a few years ago, this scandal, robo scandal, where these mortgage servicers were uh, signing people's names into affidavits and they didn't really know what the facts were. Well, we ended up, all the attorney generals got a, got a settlement and we, we put that money in, into different, different areas. But I felt that even though this is not maybe directly related to that, um, this is something that, that makes sense and something that, that we should be doing. Um, so again, thank you for giving me a chance to be with you, but most of all, thank you for the work that you do. Um, this is a real mission. It is so very, very important. Uh, you're impacting people's lives. Uh, for the uh, foster care alumni who are here, who I've had the chance to meet, who are in college, uh, congratulations. It's exciting. Uh, you have a great, great future ahead of you. Um, it's just great. Fran and I uh, uh, have eight children. Uh, we've gone through this college thing. Uh, you're shaking your head there, yeah. <laughs> we have eight children. Our eighth is a, a junior in college now. So Anna just got home. She'll be a senior, senior next year. And now we're started. We have uh, our first uh, grandson uh, just finished his first year of college. And we have uh, we have at least eight, 18 to go. So yeah, we have 19 grandkids so far, but a couple of our kids aren't even married. So who knows? But you see that the point is that you see with your own children that they can be independent, they can have their own mind, and Lord knows our kids do. Uh, great diversity in what our kids do. We go everything from a 
from a, a farmer to a teacher to a prosecutor to a stay-at-home mom to uh, one son runs a baseball team. So we got all kinds of different things and diversity and what their interests are. But in each case, you know, kids turn 18 doesn't mean that parents don't aren't needed. Uh, and it doesn't mean you don't try to give them advice or try to give them some help or try to give them some support. And it's not always financial we're talking about. It's sometimes emotional in other ways. So I think that when we think about children who sometimes don't have maybe that, that help, um, what you're doing matters so very, very much. So I thank you for it. Uh, thank you for your work. And thank you for giving me a chance to be with you this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney General Mike DeWine, for your comments. And I ask uh, Attorney General not to leave the stage yet because we need to present you with a little something, just a little something, to show our appreciation for you and your office, the extraordinary generosity, the extraordinary hindsight and foresight that you have brought to Ohio Reach to support our ongoing initiatives for foster youth and emancipating foster youth into a higher education. So I'd like to read the inscription. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't have my glasses on, so bear with me. Ohio Reach, supporting foster youth, reaching for higher education. Thanks you, Attorney General Mike DeWine. Mm, nice. <laughs>